Hey everybody out there, how's it going? Welcome back to uh, another stream. Uh, host, I guess, full Q developer. We're just hanging out, writing some code. Um, we've been working on a new app, uh, kind of a little bit of a tax manager. Um, hey, Travoke, welcome. Uh, good to see you too. Thanks for stopping by. Um, and of course, thank you so much all for uh, 200 followers. Uh, as promised, we met the goal. We are going to uh, get the tie on today. Uh, as promised, that was the goal. Um, uh, let's see, I guess the big news is over the weekend, um, we, uh, we renamed, uh, well, I guess the big news we hit 200 followers. Uh, after that, uh, we renamed uh, Swish to SBX. Um, we had a little bit of a discussion last week on stream and in the Discord about it. And, oh wow, our tests are failing. Isn't that great? Or did it just hit a break point? Anyway, we'll get to the tests in a second. Um, yeah, we renamed SBX uh, from uh, Swish I think it's a little bit of a better name. Um, hey, Bruce Leaf, good to see you. Thanks for the community loves in the chat. Um, uh, yeah, so SBX is the new name of Swish. Uh, everything is going to, uh, it's basically works exactly the same. It does work exactly the same, just a new name. Uh, which I hope explains what it does a little bit better. Uh, it's NPX for Swift, and so I feel like SBX is going to be like the the best name for it going forward. Um, and I guess my plan is to just sort of demo off what, what converting would be like uh, from, what's it called, from Swish to SBX um, here. I haven't done it yet on the app we've been working on. Uh, so I'm going to swap over instead of Xcode, we're going to use uh, Nova just to edit stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, NPM to NPX is the same as SPM, Swift Package Manager, to SPX. Um, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and close this. Uh, yeah, so I guess uh, Swish has like the directory where it looks for scripts. And the first thing we're going to do is just gonna rename that to SPX. Um, next thing we're going to do is instead of full Q developer Swish in our brew file, uh, we're going to have full Q developer slash full Q developer. And then it's the same thing as brew, but we're going to say SPX instead. Um, and that's it. Uh, just two quick steps if you're upgrading or transgrading uh, and then we can brew bundle and of course it's not writable so that's just great I know it's already installed though right yeah it's, <laughs> it's already installed uh, so don't mind the curtain there um, you can see it works just like swish all they did was uh, change the name and update the repos um uh yeah so thanks for thanks to bruce lee for helping me talk through it and think through it um and you can see like the things that i'm doing with it i have an app store script i have a script to generate the xcode project um we have our screenshot script very important for um pushing to the app store and of course an app icon uh, that's just handy because you can't push to test flight without any kind of uh, app icon at all. So I want to make it easy to just have something so you can at least get onto text, uh, get, get your app onto test flight. Um, just going to go ahead and build and then we're going to generate the project. And I guess we'll just continue on with the app. Um, 
SPX uh, Xcode uh, project. And this is kind of an aside. Uh, ooh, I have an error. Oh, it's looking for um, this particular script is looking for something inside of the swish directory. So we need to just update that. It just now should be looking inside of the SPX directory. So we'll just go ahead and update that. Uh, it's just loading environment variables for the project. Dukes96 says hello, dub dub dub, long time no see, dot dot dot, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Uh, how's it going? Good to see you again. Thanks for stopping by. So we have our project generated, and we can go ahead and open it up, and here we are. Uh, Bruce Lee says SPX hack the planet. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I need to get this up on the uh, Swift package index. I feel like I feel like this is a much better name, and now it's kind of more ready for uh, the public. Uh, Swift package index. I think someone might have put this on here already. Oh, this is like a, <laughs> a little bit of a package on top of SPX to help you get onto the App Store. I wonder who did this, because I don't think it was me. Bruce Leaf says, every time I see SPX, I get some goosebumps. Wow. <laughs> oh, someone put it on here. So it's up here already. That's amazing. Thanks, team. I don't know who did this. But that's nice. I don't have to do it. <laughs> do you maintain this repo? I do. Get shields.io compatibility badges and learn how to control our build system. Learn more. OK, I'll learn more. Uh, the link says uh, full queue developer slash SPX when I hover on view on GitHub. As the auth, are you the author or maintainer of SPX? Yes, that's me. Here's what you need to know to make your packages page on Swift Package Index. And your readme both show the best information about your package. Okay. Okay, yeah, I can I can just pop these in. Uh, I guess let's go ahead and do that. Uh, cd dot dot slash uh, sharing the old link uh, redirects to SBX. Yeah, when you change the name of a repo on GitHub. Um, it it redirects for a little bit. I don't know how long it is, if it's like two days or 30 days or 100 years, but I know there is some some overlap time where it will go forward, which I think is nice. It let me like do this rename without worrying too much. I can just announce it as much as possible. And uh, yeah, hopefully people get, get the message. Um, yeah, so let's move. Uh, do I not have it checked out here? I don't have it checked out. Oh, I think it's inside of the sh directory. Yeah, there it is. So let's just rename that to uh, spx. And then let's head on in there. We'll use Nova again. Let's go ahead and full screen this. Uh, Bruce Leaf, are you seeing somewhere where it's linked as Swish? Because I would want to, I, I would want to try to update that if that's the case. No, on the packet index, it is SBX as Bruce Leaf. That's great to hear. Thanks for confirming that it's not just on my computer. Um, So 
let's go ahead and pull this on down. Um, hmm. Am I on a branch or something? Why, why am I not seeing what I'm expecting to see? I am on a branch. There we go. Hit check out trunk and we should be on our way. There we go. That's what I'm expecting to see. And this switch directory should be empty. It is. Let's just move this off to the trash. Away you go. Um, cool, yeah, so let's put these badges in the readme. Copy some markdown. Uh, I guess just stick it right at the top, I guess. Bruce Lee says, nightly updated it for you. Oh my, I love automation. Yeah, automation April. This is uh, the month of automation. Let's go ahead and take a peek at this link. This is an automated change. Removed any redirects, removed any duplicates. Oh, Dave Ver, Ver, Ver approved these changes. That's cool. He featured me in one of his emails uh, a while back. I wonder if I can get this featured again? Does this mean he actually looked at it, or do you think he just, like, <laughs> he just clicked on it? <laughs> oh, look at that. Whoa, is, like, all my stuff up here? That would be cool. Okay, so we copied in some markdown. What else does this uh, tutorial say? Uh, let's up the text a little bit so it's a little bit easier for you to see on stream. I don't know how the text size looks on stream. I hope it's okay. As the Swift package index scans your package, it will look for a manifest file named .spi.yaml. Found, here are some things you can control or enable with it. Hosting your documentation. Oh yeah, I need to make some documentation. Configure a link to self-hosted documentation. Uh, maybe not. Control build targets and schemes to improve your package's build results. The build requires additional operating system level dependencies to succeed. And configure base images for Linux builds. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, I would like to get them to host the documentation. That'd be fantastic. sleep with our reminder hit the follow button thank you <laughs> thank you for the continued support uh yes we are celebrating the hey <laughs> thanks Alex for the subscribe with prime there's a heart for you uh good day says Alex three months in a row we sleep with the spinny hearts thank you so much team um yeah just going over finding out that my package is on the swift package index and that uh, we can do some cool stuff with that, like adding these badges in. Uh, so we copied these badges in. Let's try to push that upstairs. Um, oh, this is uh, that's the that's the app. There's SPX over here. Just disambiguate a little bit. Uh, Alex says that's huge. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Add SPI badges to the README. I wonder if I sh I probably should have been editing this in GitHub, not here locally, because now I have to go over to GitHub to see what it even looks like. Oh, look at that! That looks pretty nice. I'm a real package now. Okay, um, yeah, I guess we'll do documentation another time. 
Um, I do want to hop over to the app that we were working on. Uh, we just finished uh, upgrading it from Switch to uh, SPX, or I guess it's really a side grade. We don't, we didn't add any new features with this read name. We didn't do any new uh, requirements or anything. Just uh, a pure rename. Uh, so we'll say uh, this will say convert instead of upgrade. Convert to SPX from Swish. And then we will hop in back to the tests. Um, so once again, this is a this is a a little bit of a to-do app that I'm kind of playing around with. I have some ideas for. I mean, everyone has to-do idea to-do app ideas, and this one is mine that we're working on in here season three. Um, I want to be able to drop links from outside the app into it and i wanted to run on mac and sync with the iphone uh yeah i've as always i have way too many ideas um taking a break from the subway app a little bit uh and here are our tests uh we do have them failing uh appropriately um yeah so this is a we're storing our these items as a linked list we chose a linked list instead of sort of a standard database priority column uh, for a couple reasons. When we do a change, when, when we do a reorder, uh, well, the app crashes when we do a reorder, but pretend that didn't happen. When we do a reorder, thanks, uh, thanks, Apple. When we do a reorder, there's, we don't have to update as many items. In a linked list, you only update maybe the parent and the one after you, and then where you're going, the, their parent and the one after them. That's all that needs to change. Uh, why is this important? We're doing stuff over a network. We don't want to. We don't want to update every single uh, item in a database. Uh, we just want to make as few changes as possible. Um, it allows us to say like, like I want to move clean bedroom after set up a standing desk. Um, that's the that's the intention of the move. Instead of moving it to index three, if someone else is editing the list and they say also move it to index three, well, who wins? Um, I think it's uh, yeah, it's more about capturing the intention um, of the move. Alex says this app looks good, simple and clean. Uh, definitely simple and clean because we haven't gotten that far yet. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, not to swat away compliments, we're just, we're just getting started. Um, yeah, because I guess when I'm at work, like, there's just so much to keep track of, and it's all in, like, 15 different inboxes, so I'll, I'll create another inbox. Like, I want to put a link to, like, a Slack message that I need to get back to. A link to like the Jira ticket I'm working on, the link to something in Notion that I've saw, be able to sort of check them off and also uh, write the reason why. Um, at least for for me and some of the people I've talked to about this, uh, being forced to write the reason why this task is important has been helpful for uh, re remembering why the task is important, which helps to get it done. Um, when I don't write the reason, I don't see why it's as important, and then I, uh, you know, I forget why it's important, and maybe, maybe it wasn't important. Uh, that's how my brain works sometimes. Uh, yeah, so Bruce Leaf says, my to-do list is a stupid simple markdown file with to-do, doing, done. Yeah, I've tried that, but I need sync. I need synchronization. <laughs> if I'm on my phone, or on my laptop, or yeah, I need sync. Um, Alex says that typically you rely on the reminder app. Oh yeah, there's plenty of uh, delicious, delicious uh, to-do apps out there. Um, this is also kind of a 
an excuse to play with linked lists <laughs> um, and some other stuff down the line and FQ auth. I'm hoping that we'll use FQ auth for the server for this app. Um, since, uh, yeah, I definitely want to try it out on a new app. I don't want to stick it into an existing app. I don't know. Maybe I'll break down and do it. Um, but I'm having fun, and that's the main thing. I'm having fun playing with these, with this linked list and this SQL. Uh, let's see. So I know we ran the tests. Let's see. Yeah. So the first thing is these these names are are horrible, awful, terrible names. Um, it's like thing one, thing two. I think I should name these to be something that matches what they are and just say, instead of saying like one, two, three. So I am going to take the liberty to rename uh, something like this. <laughs> Bruce Leaf says, hit the follow button before I get sicko mode. <laughs> Few folks uh, referencing this. We'll just go ahead and update those as well. <laughs> Twitch needs an edit button. Uh, speaking of edit buttons, I am really enjoying Mastodon. I'm having a good time on Mastodon. Few more renames. But in the compiler, tell us. Alex says, uh, second PR up today, only a few nitpicks, super pumped. Oh, right on. Is that at your is that at your job? Yeah, I don't, with Twitter is 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 I don't even know the right word for it, but it's uh, I am no longer participating actively on Twitter. Although I used to participate on Twitter quite a bit a long time, it feels like a long, long time ago now. <laughs> Okay, it looks like we're compiling again, so let's go down to the next one. I guess we'll say this is the desk task. Pay $8, please. Yeah, the White House is not going to pay $8 for Twitter. Uh, is all I heard about that. I heard of other people who are like, I hope they take away my blue check mark because I'm not paying for it. And now people think I'm paying eight dollars, and I'm not paying eight dollars. Build succeeded already. Okay, I guess there's not too many mentions of that. Uh, let's hop on down to the next one. I guess rest. Yes, I was sick at the time when I wrote this. Rest was definitely on my to-do list. So I guess TikTok is not banned yet, which is nice because I'm also having a lot of fun on TikTok. They really, they really do a good job of introducing you to people that you want to see on TikTok. And Instagram keeps showing me dogs and cats. Dogs and cats are wonderful. Uh, just, you know, people people are also very wonderful. And I like people quite a bit. 
uh, which is why I'm here on Twitch, <laughs> uh, trying to meet people. And I have. I have met some wonderful, all of you wonderful folks out here. Build succeeded. Okay. Alex says, I mean, there should be a legit verification system in place, especially for politicians, public figures, governments, entities, and corporations. Yeah, I think that's one of the nice things about um, uh, what's the word? One of the nice things about Mastodon is like the White House could just host their own Mastodon instance, and then you know <laughs> everything from that instance is from the White House. Um, let's see. So thing two was the desk, I guess. I have since completed this task. I have since set up a standing desk, but these are still just wonderful, wonderful uh, example items. Alex says, have either of you been to iOS conferences? Are they worth it? Um, it depends. I think you have to like be in an extroverted mood to get value out of a conference, um, which maybe you are and maybe you aren't. Like, how, how are you going to predict your mood in like a week? <laughs> that seems like, uh, or how are you going to predict your mood like six months from now, or when's WWDC? Three months from now, or something? How are you going to predict your mood then? Um, I was fortunate to go to a to two dub dubs actually, but Steve Jobs was not there for either of them. He was doing his leave of absences at the, at both times, so uh, a little sad about that. Still happy I went. I was definitely way introverted at the time and could have gotten more value out of it. I mean, I really like that you can just watch the videos at home now. Tickets are $600. Oh, which, uh, which conference are you thinking of going to? Fourth one was clean. Now, uh, what was the third one? Third one was desk, right? Oh, third one was rest. Bruce Lee says, how am I supposed to know when taxes are due? I didn't get an email or anything. Yeah, um, <laughs> there's so much to say about that, too. Uh, so, like, TurboTax, all those tax companies, they, like, apparently, I've heard, they do lobbying to make sure that taxes stay complicated. <laughs> so when you, when you use their products, you're paying to make, to keep taxes more complicated. <laughs> You're paying to support tax lobbying. Feels really weird. Four things clean. Alex says there's the New York Swifty one. It's at the Roulette in Brooklyn. Oh, cool. Let's see, are we building now? Okay, we're building, but the test failed. But at least now we can reason about this a little bit better. So let's go ahead and commit that rename. Uh, rename fixtures so that they are easier to uh, talk about. Uh, 
and why is 51? Let's take a peek at that real quick. And why Swift, Swift, Swifty? There we go. A brand new iOS conference in iOS City in New York City. New conference in iOS City. Uh, oh, this is coming up. I guess they do uh, other ones as well. What does PL mean? Two days, 17 speakers, 250 attendees. Adrian Eves. I don't. Hmm, do I know any of these people? Let's see, one, two, two women. One. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So over half of them are white men. Oh, you know some of these people. Oh, we got a hydrate. Ad time? Someone hide. Someone got an ad time? Oh my goodness. Okay, I guess I'm supposed to do these things. I'm gonna uh, hydrate and then <laughs> redeemed ad time. Okay. <laughs> well, cheers for the hydrate. And uh, I guess we're gonna do an ad time since someone re redeemed an ad time. Uh this thing working uh, so the people who are subscribed do you still hear me or do you see ads also like this is my first time clicking this button. I really have no idea what's going on. Bruce Lee says no ads for subs. <laughs> okay, that's that was a pretty good one. Put the sunglasses on the elephant. <laughs> Power play. <laughs> uh, how do I know when the ad break is over? Twitter, I mean, is Twitch going to tell me when the ad break is over? Alex says, I feel like most devs are non-confrontational. I was Donnie Walls. I'd have a chat with him since he stole content from it. Ooh, spicy. I guess I don't know, I'm not familiar with this. I don't want to do rumors out here on on that. <laughs> oh wow. Live this costs a hundred bucks just to live stream it. Okay, that's fascinating. Code. Oh, here's Codeco. Is there sponsors? The roulette. Where is the roulette? Let's see it on the map. Oh, it's near the Apple Store. Okay. Hundred bucks for a live stream. I don't know about that. Don't know about that. 
Okay, well that's that's that. Let's see how our tests are doing. Are the ads still going? How do I know when the ads are done? Well, I hope the ads are done. <laughs> uh, Halleck says, uh, that's my grip with these conferences. I get they need to stay afloat, but man, that's so tough. Uh, yeah, 100 bucks for a live stream. I don't know if I can do that. I guess I've paid to stream like BlizzCon. Uh, long time ago back when there was blizzcon i don't remember how much it cost though i don't think it was a hundred bucks <laughs> bruce was saying i was wanting an open bites ad <laughs> i will teach you more than 600 dollars worth of ios knowledge says bruce lee <laughs> how do you how do you measure knowledge <laughs> Okay, so coming to our test, Open Bytes Conference win. <laughs> yeah, we can charge we can charge ninety eight dollars instead of a hundred dollars for the live stream. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to. I'm not trying to dunk on anyone. Please don't take it that way. Just uh, having a little bit of fun with it. Okay, now this these IDs being uh, being UU IDs, I think we gotta fix that too, so they're a little bit easier to reason about. Can we say like how many is this? One, two, three. So eight. Let's do like eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 20 community subs. Oh my goodness. Zach! <laughs> well, thanks so much for stopping by, dude. I really appreciate you. Thanks for this. Thanks for the subs. Thanks for the, whew, thanks for all the support. Have fun with your family FaceTime. <laughs> Huge drop, oh my goodness, I'm speechless. And now he's disappearing. My work here is done. <laughs> How am I supposed to react? <laughs> Bye, dude. <laughs> Then, and then he's gone. Then he has this. Two, three, four, three, four. So this is 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, well, at least it compiled. Um, there's just like no other way to like keep track of these things. I take the dashes out, does it still compile? I mean I know it's gonna compile, it's still gonna it's still gonna be valid. No, it needs the dashes. I guess three of these. What a, what a guy. What a guy. 
what am I supposed to say? I'm just, I guess, just, just be grateful. Don't be sad he's gone, be glad he stopped by. Oh, we have an extra banana. So as you know, I started a new job recently, and they call parentheses bananas <laughs> at my at the new job. Well, so everything's passing, and now we can see like the first thing. It's not equal to third thing. Um, wonder if I should. Try to name it after the thing that it is. I guess I have to be like base 64, or should I like change these back to numbers? Because now I have to like remember which one is which. Or I could just assert on the title instead of the ID. Something like that. And then we'll see which one is here instead of the one that we're expecting. We're trying to clear the way for ourselves so we can. Uh, Make this easy to reason about when there's an error. Okay, so uh, yeah, move to top is the, the function that we're working on. Apparently it's not doing anything, which is why everything is all broken. Um, and uh, yeah, so you have to do a few things to implement this. Um, so yeah, I guess for our, our linked list in the database we have we have two tables. We have the linked list table, and we have a pointer to the beginning of the list. Um, this is because I didn't want to do a magic number for the head. Usually, it would say the item that's null has a null parent is the head of the list. Um, but we can't guarantee that there's only one of those with uh, SQL. Uh, constraints in SQLite. You can probably do this in Postgres or something, but here on the phone we have SQLite. Um, let's see, so where's our tables? Migrations. Yeah, so we have our table of things and we have a pointer to the head, um, just a foreign key, and this is this is not null. So I have to update this uh, alongside uh, all the other stuff that we would normally be doing. Um, now these are these are two different methods, like a uh, regular reorder and then moving something to the top. I wonder if we can combine these at some point. Um, but for right now, I'm treating them separately just to think through it. Um, 
this is kind of my first time doing a link list in <laughs> in a database so it's just you know taking my time with it um Let's see, so I guess the first thing we want to do is we're going to open up our write transaction onto the database. Uh, let's see, and then what do we want to do? Um, I guess we can make a diagram again. So store as a linked list in the database. So if we move to the top, um, so I guess there's the there's the current head, I guess. And then I guess we'll just call that I guess we'll call it old the old head, I guess. Then afterwards it's gonna be um the new item uh old head Oh I guess A doesn't really mean anything here. Nothing A is not a it's not a thing here. Yeah, we could just call this, just leave this as A. Um, I keep I keep wanting to refactor these two things because I feel like we're gonna do that, but I'm trying to trying to keep it trying to keep myself uh, focused. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to find our item. Let's just go ahead and load that up. And of course we will, I guess, guard, make sure that it's there. Oh, this, this will already throw if it's not found. Okay. Um, Yeah, so we have to load C. Um, and we also want to load, I guess, A. And we should probably make a helper, uh, helper. Let's try to make a helper to load the current head. something like this. And we can make this like, um, I guess the list could be empty and then there, would, there wouldn't there would be a head. So I guess this, this could be nil, huh? Which means we should also write a version of this test uh, with the, <laughs> where it's an empty list where we're sort of inserting for the first time. Um, So I guess these have kind of have some guarantees about expectations of the current state of the database. Um, but we'll get there. We will get there. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and just go on thing. Yeah, I guess I should go on thing. Static funk uh, print uh, head. Database. Uh, and this will return a maybe a thing. Uh, execute. Uh, is that what we want to do? No. Uh, thing dot fetch one with a statement. Yeah, this one. Uh, 
and I guess this thing throws, huh? So we're going to say, uh, let's turn on caps lock, select, uh, oops, select star um, from a thing, and I guess the store keys. And we want to join on a thing a head where. Um, Do we want this to be a join or a subselect? Because there's there's only ever going to be one of these things, so I think I want it to be a, a subselect. And let's look at the uh, migration. What's the name of it? Head ID. from that table that points to it. And we'll say uh, limit uh, one, since there's only ever one. And I guess we can limit one on this whole thing as well. Um, but I think that comes for free from this fetch one thing, so I'll leave it off. And I think that should do it. Um, this will be an else. Uh, this will have a new error. I'll say like the head was not found. Should never happen, but I guess it could happen. Um, throw the error and then we'll say um, illegal state or something delete the app and try again or something unrecoverable state I don't know database is broken Okay, so so we have the we have the item we have a, and I guess we'll need uh, we need to load C. Oh, we have C. We have C. Okay, we have everybody in memory. Um, so what do we need to do? Uh, we need to rearrange the uh, the pointers to the IDs, um, and then save them. And also, we'll need to uh, update the update the header. We'll say this is uh, item ID. 
That's gonna be one thing that we want to do. I'll comment that out for now. Uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, I need to skip this song. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so if I update them uh, kind of live here and then save them, we'll get um, conflicts. Um, so you can see I kind of nilled them out. I kind of saved the IDs and then nilled them out. Uh, Uh, so, hmm, what's the what's the way to do this? I'm definitely overthinking it a little bit. Um, I guess that's why I drew a little picture up here. So A's new parent is going to be the, the item item ID. C's new parent is going to be um, item's old parent ID. Um, then item.parent ID is going to be nil because it's now the it's now the front of the list. So we updated A, we updated C. Um, and B doesn't need an update, so then we just need to save these. So that's, I guess, the final update. And I guess we kind of want to copy these over so that uh, we don't have a conflict. Well, I guess I can show you. So if we run Command U, to run all the tests, we'll have an error. And the error is going to be, yeah, unique constraint failed. Because while we're, I, I kind of wish we could do this all at once, and I bet there is a way to do it. Um, but I guess like up here, we just kind of saved the IDs uh, and kind of took it from there. So let's save these as temporary variables. And then we want to nil all of them out. save them all, and then we're going to put the right ones on and save them all again to avoid a conflict. And then at the end, uh, we'll update the head. Uh, so let's go ahead and write this method. And let's see, how do we do this? Uh, db.execute some 
SQL, I guess we'll say, um, yeah, let's do this triple quoted. I love triple quoted strings. Uh, update, uh, thing head. to this, and we'll pass that on in. Now, where do I, is it, do we do the from here? Oh, this needs uh, the arguments uh, keyword. Oh, wait. I think that's I think that's fine. But this can throw. So let's go ahead and pop that in there. Um, they could probably do this as as one line. This is not very long at all. It kind of looks more confusing as triple coded actually. Cool. So let's run the tests. Test succeeded. Wow, that was easy. I was not expecting that to pass so soon, but I guess we did think through it very carefully, so perhaps I shouldn't be so surprised. Uh, but yeah, we should also make this assertion. Um, and this this should be a another helper. Let's say. Um, Get the oh we can just use uh oh we have this already we can just get the first one we don't need to make a new function actually we have something we can use already Actually, I mean, I guess we're kind of using it already. We're, we're calling this right here. This is the first one. That's This is how it's implemented. So I know that's actually fine. Okay. Okay. So now if we run the app and we say cleaning the bedroom is the most important thing, we move it to the top. Still got a crash though. Items parent not found. Um, let's let's clear let's clear the database. Let's make sure nothing is too corrupted in there. Clear, clear, clear. Insert some fixtures. Okay, now let's move this to the top. Do we still get a crash? We do. Okay. Want to make sure it wasn't for something silly. And where would you say you are crashing? So we moved it to the top. But it still called, it didn't call the commit uh, move to top. So that's interesting. Um, so I guess that's a mistake from or here, I guess. Hmm. Okay, let's put a breakpoint here. Let's try that again. See now, now it worked. Now I put a breakpoint in. See, I think let's let's clear everything. Let's try that. Try that one more time. Oh, I didn't put a breakpoint. Oh my goodness. Clear, clear, clear. Okay, now let's put the breakpoint in. Didn't hit the breakpoint. Why is that? Hello? I'm 
keeps it's not saving that all. Okay, now we hit the breakpoint. Um Okay, so what is what is items? It has this at the top and then one and then two and then three. I guess that's I guess that's in order. Um, and then which branch are we going to go down? This is, did this, this did go to move to top. That's interesting. But then it, then it goes ahead and still is very upset. And it's not telling me which line, well, I guess, I guess it's failing here. When we're trying to load, um, when we're trying to load C. C is the one that comes after item ID. So we just say like the one that has the parent. Um, and it can't find it, so it throws. Hmm. Let's clear the database, insert fixtures, bring it to the top again. Did I set a breakpoint? I hope so. I keep forgetting to. It's not hitting any of this. Why are you not hitting breakpoints? Why is life unfair? If I launch the app again, I don't think it I don't think it saved to the database. Yeah, it didn't. Still not hitting our breakpoint. What is uh How am I supposed to take out the bugs when the debugger won't break at the breakpoint? Is this, is this a problem with the debugger or is this just not happening at all? Hello. So let's fall back to print line debugging, I guess. <laughs> what is it the deal? What is it the deal that it is? Oh, Swift UI. Now we got it. That was like the third one. And who knows what state the database is in right now. Now it got it. Okay, so this this didn't, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if Xcode is just trolling me super hard right now. Uh, let's see, what's the items? Guess they match what's in the UI right now.
And then item ID is interesting. So it thinks the drop was on the second item. Why do my test pass and my Swift UI does not? Oh. Well, let's let's fully delete the app. Yeah, we're not hitting we're not hitting this breakpoint at all. Um I guess I'll Google for that. Form drop not called. Oh, other people are searching for this. Wow, that's bright. Just test, I just test your code and all the methods are getting called. It must be a glitch. Restart the simulator, clean the build folder, rebuild, run. Hmm. Uh, Swift UI. Uh, why is why is Stack Overflow not in dark mode? <laughs> We have dark mode enabled. Um, anyway, sorry for the bright lights out there. Uh, let's see, what does this person say? Maybe I should be comparing on dragged item instead of item. Let's see, what is this about? How to add drag and drop on Swift UI? Okay. Drop types. Or. Hmm. This is so bright. <laughs> I don't recall where, but I met occasionally that we should not use base UT types for data loading, instead only concrete types. Finishing register, so it worked a variant. but I'm not even dropping from outside. This is just a drop from inside my own app and it's not getting called.
This info isn't even being used. <laughs> oh, Apple. Well, let's take a let's take a break and do the reading for the day. Um, maybe we'll get some inspiration on how to approach this differently. Uh, yeah, so we've been reading through um, the Creative Act: A Way of Being by Rick Rubin, and today's little section is called "Nature as Teacher." Of all the great works that we can experience. Nature is the most absolute and enduring. We can witness it change through the seasons. We can see it in the mountains, the oceans, the desert, and the forest. We can watch the changes of the moon each night and the relationship between the moon and the stars. There is never a shortage of awe and inspiration to be found outdoors. If we dedicated our lives solely to noticing changes in natural light and shadows as the hours pass, we would constantly discover something new. We don't have to understand nature to appreciate it. This is true of all things. Simply being aware of moments when your breath gets taken away by something of great beauty. It may be witnessing a single line formation of birds snaking through half-lit evening sky, or standing awed at the foot of a giant redwood tree that's thousands of years old. There's so much wisdom in nature that when we notice it, it awakens possibility within us. It is through communing with nature that we move closer to our own nature. If you're picking colors based on a Pantone book, you're limited to a certain number of choices. If you step out in nature, palette is infinite. Each rock has such a variation of color within it, we could never find a can of paint to mimic the exact same shade. Nature transcends our tendencies to label and classify, to reduce and limit. The natural world is unfathom unfathomably more rich, interwoven, and complicated than we are taught. So much more mysterious and beautiful. Deepening our connection to nature will serve our spirit, and what serves our spirit invariably serves our artistic output. The closer we get to the natural world, the sooner we start to realize we are not separate, and that when we create, we are not just expressing our unique individuality, but our seamless connection to an infinite oneness. Yeah, I guess that's kind of building on the reading from last week where he was saying, like, try to be around great works of art if you want to make great works of art, even if it's not in your genre. Um, and how, I guess, nature is this big creative thing that that's kind of around us. And I do like the part where he says you don't have to understand it to appreciate it. Just yeah, just standing there and appreciating. I guess some I like some of the examples, like the sky or a tree, are are great. <coughs> and I guess like the part where it talks about deepening our understanding. I guess like you know. <coughs> Excuse me. talking too long I guess <laughs> okay let's try quitting Xcode uh, let's reset the simulator and let's try this again
Oh, thanks so much for the follow, Liam Dor. Really appreciate it. Welcome to the community. Liam Dor asks, I am searching for my career choice. I want to know if I shall pursue a career in cybersecurity or machine learning, which is more likely to have potential in the future and be lucrative and less likely to be replaced in by AI in the future? Um, those are great questions. Uh, I don't, I don't predict lucrative careers on this channel. I think uh, other channels can help you with that. Uh, on this channel, I encourage you to to follow what's interesting to you. Um, as a as a hobby or as a career or both, uh, that's that's kind of my path, and it may not work for everybody. But I don't I don't know how to give advice for anything else. I know there's a lot of people that talk about AI on their streams uh, right now. Um, yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of exciting stuff happening over there right now. No, nope, we're still not hitting these breakpoints. Why, why is Xcode doing this to me? Uh, are we getting some of these other these other callbacks? Okay, so we got we got this callback. And okay, so we're getting this one. Let's let's keep it going. But we're not getting we're not getting this call back. Which is the whole point of this. Um Yeah, I think everything is gonna be replaced by AI at some point. Um, I'm not sure if trying to avoid that, uh, I don't know, like making sure everyone has basic income uh, so that when things do get taken over by AI, it's good for everyone and not just the, uh, not just the owners of the companies. So we can also put our breakpoint uh, here. Yeah, so that that came through. Hmm. Why why is our why are these breakpoints not happening at all? Let's see, is there something I'm missing here? Uh I guess I could take a peek at what these things are passing to us. I don't think this is going to tell us that much, but I am so confused why the drop delegate is not getting not getting called. Like how else are we supposed to 
Maybe I'm just supposed to like do stuff in here, like always update stuff in the database. I mean, if that's the case, then Oh, that fails right away. Hmm. I mean, I want it to happen like this is this is the callback that it's supposed to be, right? See now, now we're getting it. Items apparent not found. Um. So that means our database got corrupted somehow by the callback not being called. Now we play through, we're gonna knee constraint failed. Yeah. Swift UI reorder uh, list, I guess. On move. Oh, let's try this instead of. Um, Instead of the drop that I'll get, I guess. Uh, let's see, how does how does he from two? Sure. There's no member on move? Then where is this uh, on move coming from? Only works with for each. Oh, so if the tag it onto the for each. Oh, okay. That's fine. We are compiling though, right? No, let's see if we needed this one. Okay, there we go. Let's move this down here. There we go. Okay, so let's let's print this and see what comes out from from to to and let's just see what's there. No, we can't we can't drag anything at all now. Do I have to make it a list?
Oh my goodness. So racking this NLS made the whole thing disappear? Oh, because it's inside of a scroll view too. Okay. Let's take off the scroll view. And I think we can take off these spacers as well. There we go. This looks like crap, but I guess it's it's working. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um take off the padding, I guess. Wow, this looks like complete crap. Um, let's put a background on it, I guess. I have one. And it's not being used, isn't that great? Is there no drag and drop outside of a list? CV stack on drag. Yeah, but this is what we were just doing and it wasn't it wasn't working all the time. I guess he's providing nil as the item. That's interesting. And just using the type identifier. I guess it's text. Definitely weird, definitely weird. Let's try going back to the lazy V stack. Oh, that put in like so many um, comments. Did not mean to do that.
Yeah, now there's no drag and drop at all. Okay, what's the state of our code? Let's not commit this, but everything else I do want to update because we did get a lot of work done there. Um, the order tests pass. Let's push that up. And then let's try to figure this out. So this other, f this other guy. How do I know that perform drop is going to get like what's what's the difference here? So we can drop again. You know, all these exiteds in the console. We did get here right away. Let's see which side of the branch should we go to. I think that worked. Let's move this to the top. Oh. So our tests are passing, but it's not working in, in real life. all on the item, right? Yeah. The UID does not conform to expected type NS secure coding. Because we can make a wrapper for it. So let's make one. Then let's conform to the protocol. Code in data. So I guess um, something like that. Decode 
data. Now we have the data, get a string from it. string we can make the UUID so that we have that we can say uh, self dot init Yeah, we're in a weird state. It seems to get corrupted pretty easily. Did it work? Did it actually work? Rest is at the top. Let's restart the app. No, it did not save anything to the database. to the top again so it's just like moving stuff around in memory it's not it's not saving it this is so weird Is it it's ut type dot text let's find ut type in scope Need to import the uniform type identifiers framework. Oh, is that all that missing? We didn't hit the breakpoint, so I don't think it's saved to the database. Yeah, it didn't. What's the deal with drag and drop? <laughs> Is this what I'm supposed to be showing? Am I supposed to be showing failing at this or am I only supposed to be showing when this when this works out I 
wish I wish I could see how this works out. Modify view to accept drops using the on drop of is targeted. Form action. I guess we can try this instead. I was 14. Is this newer than the other one? Yeah, this is, okay, this is older, this is newer. Glad there's an alternative. comment out this stuff and I guess this goes here I guess this can be optional, it looks like. Okay, and where's the error? Editor placeholder in file. Oh, okay, yeah, let's just chill out on that, I guess. Let's just print them for now and put a breakpoint there. That's our problem. We're not getting the, these breakpoints called. The scene argument for it is targeted. Uh, oh. Now that thing showing up. Swift UI man. What is what is your deal? Oh now I have on drag, but it won't drop on here. Isn't that fascinating? So we have on drop here, but it's never it's never calling into here. Oh, use a different one instead. What's how is this different from the one that I had in there?
Does anyone see the difference? Oh, this is of UT types, not strings. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So let's um, let's make our our type. So then we can use this here. We'll stop. Uh... Expectly found nil. Why is that? Let's see. Creating a type. The system doesn't know the type identifier. Oh, so we have to register it. Oh, is this why this isn't working sometimes? Oh, so I need to register register this. Uh, register t type iOS. Step one, create the document type in an info P list. What about just for drag and drop? Register and exported UTIs, okay. ETI for drag and drop. App populates item providers registered type identifiers array. Is there a way to do this without fussing with info P lists? Uh, it doesn't. I guess that's why they were using strings, huh? Okay, so let's try this. Let's try this again without a custom type. Let's just use strings. Text is it called? So 
plain text. Dot UID string. There is a string. Plain text. String does not conform to expected type and has secure coding. And I can form it to in a string. This wants to be a string as well. I guess this is the identifier. Succeeded. Okay, well, we're getting the plus now. And we hit the breakpoint right away. Okay, okay. Writers that first dot. Let's see if we can get something out of it. Uh, how, do, how do we get something out of it? Uh, copy, let's go to the documentation. Team data, is that really what it is? Load item. Load data representation. It's just a string. Let's try it. Let's try it. No way to it but to do it. Load item, I guess. Load transferable. Loads the item's data. Uh, for type, uh, I guess this again. Next two arguments. I guess we'll print the error if it's there. And then T is what can we do with what can we do with a secure coding? Um where's the documentation? You can call this method from synchronous code using a completion handler as shown. You can call the asynchronous method. Load item async. And we still end up with a secure coding. I'm not sure I want that. Type information for the first parameter. You might set the type of the first parameter to ns string. Oh, okay. Let's try that because it is supposed to be a string. Oh, we need uh, parens. Maybe these have to be optional. What's the problem? Remove the question mark. Oh, okay.
Dennis item provider, load item, no options, completion handler. Not force unwrap, not optional type. So that kind of compiles. Specs two arguments. Still getting a failure. Not convert type of this, you can expect to type uh, completion handler, aka optional. Optional any secure coding, any error. Then puts the error out here. Give it some space. Maybe that's what it needs. Uh, it's ambiguous without more context. Okay, all that. At least compiled. No error, and then we got the UUID. K. Okay. Uh yeah. So I think I do want to I do want to do the async one. Um load item or type identifier. Oh, without a completion block, yeah, for sure, 100%. Yeah, I don't want that at all. Let's just print the item for now. Oh, good, okay, so move this upstairs. Oh, and it came through, wonderful. So what we want to do then is, I guess, to find a function to to move it. I guess. I guess this is the ID, but now we need to uh, deal with the, the types here. Any secure coding. Okay, so how do we get a secure coding to be a string? How 
do I get the coder associated with this thing, though? Not convert value type void? Why is it void? Okay, we got a Google for this and a secure coding to string. Code object for key. Huh. Yeah, this doesn't this doesn't have that this doesn't have that method. This guy knows. Oh, I need an unarchiver, I guess. Then how do I pass in this secure coding here? So I have a secure coding. How do I convert it back to a string? I thought I thought this would be easy. Forming types. Make this a data? Can we get a data out of this thing? There's only an encode on here. Just returns NS secure coding. That's it. Like we, it doesn't give us a decoder. This 
is so strange. So we know, we see from printing it that it's it's right here. I guess we can see that it's a as data, but how do we convert this, this secure coding to data or a string or, or what? Decode object. Um, can I pass in? Can I pass in the secure coded thing to an NS coder? Oh, that's just an interface. So you want a NS unarchiver? Unarchiver for reading from data? Yeah, it's not convertible to data. I'm trying to get, just trying to get it out. There's, <laughs> there's got to be a better way. Um, get string from NS item provider. Load object of class. Uh, it's like it's so close, but these types are really difficult to deal with. object of class. Okay, let's just try just go to reproduce. This is to reproduce the bug. Oh. Drop enter, drop updated. And when does it do the thing?
hit the break point. But, hmm. My fixture is like set up wrong or something. Set up one, just one. And then restart the app. Well, that that worked. That's great. Now if you want to move it to the top, okay. Only when we move it to the top do we not find it. Okay. So what's the deal with that? So it can't find an item with the parent of 2222. Like, why is that? Hmm. Well, let's clean this stuff out. Looks like this this helped it um always hit the break point. Not sure why this is not it's not working though. Um let's restart the app. Clear it, insert everything, just move it straight to the top, right off the bat. Yeah, something's just a little off there. Um, but we are at the end of our stream. It's 1030. Um, again, thank you so much for the 200 followers. Um, it can be a little frustrating. Like, uh, we weren't hitting breakpoints for a while. And I'm not sure why uh, Xcode is doing that, but it looks like we're all hitting them now that we added in this extra method on the drop delegate. Uh, so hopefully we can figure out uh, what's going on next time. Um, Again, uh, SPX, the NPX for uh, Swift, is is out now. Um, it's on my GitHub, fullqdeveloper.com. Uh, well, github.com slash fullqdeveloper slash SPX. Um, and it's on the Swift package index. We got, um, got our little badges up and going. Um, And uh, what else? You can follow me on Mastodon or join the Discord. And um, yeah, it's just a lot of fun uh, coding live. And I will see you uh, Mondays, Mondays at uh, Mondays at eight New York City time. Uh, have a great evening, morning, or night, wherever you are. Thanks so much for stopping by.